Hi guys, I'm Andrew from Cruise Master and welcome to Cruise Master Class. Today I'm here with Damo from Flash Diesel and we're going to be talking about everything that goes into tuning diesel vehicles. So I first met Damo and the team over at Flash Diesel a few years ago when I got my 76 Cruiser and I wanted to get a bit more power out of it. I went and visited a bunch of companies around the place. Most of them I wouldn't trust tuning a lawnmower, but we ended up at Flash Diesel and the guys over there um, convinced me they knew what they were talking about. And the big thing I was after was reliability and a bit more power you know, and economy if possible for, for doing the towing here at Cruise Master. So we did a bit of work on that, they tuned the vehicle and it turned into uh, in an excellent product. So when we started the Tone Performance Centre here at Cruise Master, one of the big things we wanted to do was be able to offer that you know, reliable, conservative tune to our customers. So you know, we now uh, partnered with these guys and we're doing that on a, on a pretty frequent basis. Um, so Damo, tell us a bit about where Flash Diesel came from and your experience and stuff like that. Well, Flash Diesel is born out of uh, another company called Power Talk, which has been around for 20 odd years. And that primarily started as an engine building tuning company. Um, started with the race cars, moved into road going vehicles. Now, probably some 10 years ago, we saw a, a niche for a dedicated uh, diesel tuning sector of the market and there really wasn't anything there. So for the last probably eight to 10 years, we've developed a platform that allowed us to not only calibrate these vehicles like really well, but also offer this as a, a network throughout the country, uh, including uh, you guys here at uh, Cruise Master. Uh, and it just works out well because we cover a, a range of different industries, um, which just makes it easier for the, for the customer to, to you know, utilize the product. Yeah, I think that reflects you know, the experience you have on the quality of the, of the product of, at the end of the day so yeah what um how is it how is the tune developed uh, it seems like quite a um, complex thing to me when you look at the maps but it it is it 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 can be like i probably should say some some things are easier than others now a, a lot of vehicles are based on the same platform with a different badge on them um, and once you engineer a, a solution for that particular platform then it you know it moves across the different different areas but the basic way that we do it is that we get a vehicle in um, not only uh, here in Brisbane which is our head office but also around the country so we have facilities throughout the country in every in every uh, major major city and some regional areas um, and we'll get the the same vehicle in and test it uh, in stock guys and then we do a, a range of tests uh, and calibration modifications to see what results uh, are achieved from from doing that um, now the, the name of the game is generally we try and break things so that the customer doesn't experience yep. that. <laughs> we do that. <laughs> uh, and, then, and then obviously we step back quite a bit from that point there. Uh, and, and that's generally the process. It's, it's an R&D over a long period of time. Nothing gets released you know, without a, a substantial um, you know, aftermarket assessment um, prior to its release. Yeah, that's, it's, a, it's a pretty big job. It, it, it is, but we're, we're lucky enough to have good relationships with the, with the OEM sector as well. So, yeah, um, that's important. And, and vehicle manufacturers aren't always too happy about giving away their secrets, but um, you know, again, because we've been around such a long time um, and, and that sector of the, the industry um, you know, is something that wants to, to, to push forward, um, they're helpful and, and they're very useful um, bits of information when we look at how far we can push something, not only in the engine, but you also got to take into consideration if, you, if you're putting bucket loads of torque into an engine, what happens at every point from that point back to the vehicle? So you've got to consider the transmission, the, you know, the drive shaft, the, the differential and everything else that goes in between. So understanding you know, those, yeah. those weak points and catering that into calibration is, is, is yeah. key in our, in our process as well. Yeah, it's, it's, an, it's an important job. So it's not a case of just twiddling a screw on a carby anymore. You know, what actually goes into installing the map into the vehicle? Well, basically, um, the, the customer arrives at your destination. Uh, you're pulling the file out of the vehicle. So what we're working with is the, is the calibration file that's contained within the vehicle. So you're extracting that uh, via the software that we use. Uh, that gets sent to us. We make changes to that software based on information that you provide us. And that changes from vehicle to vehicle yep. and person to person. So that gets taken into consideration when we develop the, the map. 
Um, we write that map, we then send it back to you, and then that goes back into the vehicle. Um, you go through your checks again, yep. and uh, basically it's good to go. Yeah, so I get the good thing is though that it's a bit of a copy and paste process. When we say we remove the map out of the ECU, we're not pulling one out permanently and the thing's not drivable. We're taking a copy of that, you guys modify it, and we put it back in. So the vehicle's never really without the ability to work. No, it's, 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 quite, it's a common question is that if you pull it out, can I still drive the car? The answer is yes. I mean, you could literally come in one day, have the file removed or extracted, drive off and come in the next day for the reinstall process. So yes, yeah, we're not removing it completely. Yeah. We're just simply taking a copy, modifying that copy, popping it back in the car. Yeah, That's, it's, it's important to note that because you know you don't want to be without your car whilst, whilst things are getting done, hey? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. All right, so we've got a ton of common, commonly asked questions now, and um, I imagine these come up quite a bit. Um, so if I want to get a bit more power out of the vehicle, what are the types of things that should be considered before we even start plugging the, the reader into the ABD port? So basically, it's, it's, it comes back to fit for purpose. So when you've got a vehicle that you want to get a bit more power and talk at, the, the major advantage visiting someone like yourself is that you can assess not only the vehicle's conditions, but what the, the customer is also telling you. Um, and then you make an assessment on that, on how we then go with the calibration. So if a, if a vehicle is over its GCM uh, and yeah. the vehicle's not fit for purpose, there's no calibration on earth that's going to resolve that issue. It needs to be a different vehicle or a different scenario. So that yeah. assessment is something that, that takes care of uh, at, um, at Cruise Master here. And you're probably uh, best to talk about the process that's involved in, yeah. in looking at that vehicle when it comes in. Yeah. So everyone has their own ways of doing it, but I know particularly here is, uh, is very comprehensive. Yeah, we tend to get the vehicle in, we're looking at the age of the car, is it in good condition? No, we won't just tune anything. If the thing doesn't like it's been serviced for the past 50,000 kilometres, we're not going to touch it. Then we have a, a snap-on scan tool, we chuck that on, we read all the codes in it. Hopefully there aren't any. If there are, then we need to look into that a bit further. So you know, we just want to make sure we are so have a good vehicle before we start. And we do the whole tune process, which we'll get a bit more into in a sec. Uh, then when we get the map back in, we take the vehicle for a drive. Again, we take it up a couple of hills. We try to get into overboost and stuff like that. Then we'll scan it again to make sure it's all still good. And if that's all fine, then we're happy and the customer can have their, have their vehicle back. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and you touched on that, that driving experience, the proofs in the pudding with this stuff. I mean, everyone refers to dyno sheets and numbers and, and, and you know, kilowatt and torque increases, but ultimately what we're, what we're trying to do, achieve here is, is produce a, a driving result for the customer. So unless it feels better, you know, why are you doing it? Yeah. So that, that drive is the, is the real indicator is how you're yeah. performing. I think one of the big things about um, developing that chain between us is understanding the customer's requirements. Mm. I think that's underdone a lot that um, you know, people will go to a tuning company, they chuck it on the dyno and they get everything out of it they possibly can. That's not necessarily the safest way to do it. We tell you guys, uh, what's the ATM of the van? We've typically weighed it anyway. Is it a heavy car? Has it got all the gear on it? It's got a snorkel and exhaust, all those types of things. So, the, so you guys can actually you know, tweak that map accordingly. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and you hear a lot in the industry about a, a map for towing and a map for this and a map for that. And that's kind of true to a degree, but everything that we do um, for yourself and all flash diesel agencies, that everything is custom written to suit a particular application um, and a customer's requirements. So there's, there, and, and that comes back to extracting the best information from the customer you can first, and that allows us to do what we do yeah. more accurately. Yeah, that's, a, that's actually a good lead into the next question which is what's the difference and what's the benefits between chips and flash tuning and now you can get a box of tunes, you know, what's the guy? All right, well, it's a, it's a fairly heated topic and uh, if this is going to be on the internet somewhere, then, then there's going to be plenty, <laughs> plenty more discussions about it. But basically, uh, a flash calibration, whether it's a, a DIY one or one that you've done through one of our dealerships is, is a manipulation of that, that factory data. The difference between Flash Tune A and Flash Tune B that's DIY is, is our dealer network. Uh, guys like Cruise Master who follow that process 
of assessment of the vehicle, but also, uh, for lack of a better term, interrogation of the customer's requirements yeah. to achieve the results. Because someone that's doing a DIY kit that might ring up for it may not disclose everything about it. Not that we're being hard on the customer, but unless we understand that, there's a risk that you can hurt the vehicle. Yeah. So um, A, you can see it with your eyes, but B, you're also listening with your ears that, okay, well, this customer may be telling me he's not towing, but there's a gigantic tow bar and a whole bunch of yeah, caravan stuff exactly. in the car. So do we need to assess a little further? What do we need to do? And the reason for that is not so we can put more power into it. It's actually so we can tune it a little bit safer. Yeah. So in some instances where it's a laden vehicle, you need to pull back a little bit to ensure that you know, the vehicle is safe uh, and longevity is preserved. Yeah, well, at the end of the day, there's no point in overtuning the vehicle and then you, know, you get on your first trip 100 kilometres up the highway and it blows a hole in the side of the block. Exactly. No, no one needs that on their holidays. Reliability, reliability. That's, yeah. that's, that's the aim. Yeah. So kind of moving on from that then, and here's, here's another hairy question. What about my warranty and insurance? Insurance is not an issue because we're not physically changing any aspect of the vehicle there. It's still um, within parameters. Uh, some of them are, are self-enforced. Some of them are you know, guided by OEM specifications. So that's, that's not a drama. Warranty is a, is a tricky area. Now, you'll hear a lot of companies say from one extreme to this will not affect your warranty at all to others saying that it's a really bad way of doing things and this is just going to be a, a disastrous result. The truth is somewhere in between, probably closer up this end, um, everything that we're doing to a calibration is within scope of what we determine through our, our um, our design process initially, and, that, and that's with data coming back from the OEM sector. Now, realistically, um, as long as you know you're sensible about things, um, there's not a drama. If you know if we have an issue, well, then you know if we we make a mistake, well, then that's on us at that point to resolve that situation. Um, if there's if there's no fault there, but there is a is a glaring manufacturing issue that would be covered under warranty normally, then uh, in our experience, that's always gone through you know without yeah. any issue. I'm not saying that there, it can't be an issue down the track, but because we work very closely with a lot of the, the OEM guys, and we're not you know we're probably more on the conservative type, side of things with calibration, you know they're more than happy to work with us in most instances. Yeah, so, um, yeah, and and again. It comes back again to fit for purpose. Um, you know, we talked about that before, but if you're using the, the vehicle for what it's designed for and the calibration is an addition to that to make the driving experience better, you're not really going to have any issues. Yeah, that's, that, that's, an, that's a good thing to know. And um, say something does happen, you know, I'm, I'm traveling around Australia with my caravan on the back and I throw a code. Uh, do I have to bring it all the way back into Brisbane from WA or you know, you've got a bit of a, a network behind you? Yeah, look, I mean, um, Flash Diesel itself has a dealer network of some sort of 20 or 30 with that brand. We then have some other dealers that work independently or some other branding, but we still provide that network. So um, that entire team is all on the same, same page. We're all looking out for each other. So if for whatever reason you have an issue anywhere around Australia, there's normally someone that's fairly close by that you can call into that will look after your needs there. Um, and in most instances, that's free of charge. There may be a labour charge associated with this, something that's out of the bounds of what's, you know, what's happened. But um, generally speaking, uh, there is that network coverage there. Um, and yeah. because of our, our database of, uh, I guess, files, you could call them, then everything is referenced back to a central location. So we always know, um, and again, this comes back to information from the customer to start with. Yeah. So when you're, when you're making that assessment in the early days that we spoke about, that's written as part of that file. So that's yeah. something attached to that file that, that we see. So if your customer then appears in Kalgoorlie, um, we can go, oh, okay, well, it came in for this, but now yeah. they're saying this has happened. Okay, we can understand. And then it just makes for a, a more comprehensive uh, I guess package, which is yeah. something that you're not going to see in the in the DIY sector. Yeah, no, that's that, that's a good thing. Um, okay, and the, one of the last questions we have here is: so if I take my cruiser in for a service, are they going to wipe the map? Can they wipe the map? And I, I guess if the worst was to happen and they did manage to do it, you know. You know, what goes on from there? Okay, so generally speaking, as part of a normal service, unless there's a specific recall on that uh, engine management calibration, it's unlikely 
that they're going to wipe over that that map. Um, we've seen it happen a handful of time over the last 10 years. However, it is possible they do have the capabilities there to, to wipe over the top of that map. But once again, um, throughout that dealer network throughout the country, um, free of charge, then we'll reinstall that at any one of our locations around the country. So either your customer comes back to you or if they're on the yep. road and they're getting its service and that's happened, any one of our locations then we'll yeah. take care of that as well. That's good. That's definitely a service that is important and it's something, you know, that um, shows uh, the size of flash diesel and the support that you're going to get from, from you guys. So that, that's really good. So that's, um, we've grilled you enough, I think. <laughs> so thanks for, thanks for coming in and giving us, a bit, giving us a bit more information on the whole you know, tuning side of things. Always a pleasure. I mean, and, and it's good for us as well to be associated with the likes of yourself, not only from a, look, typically we deal with a lot of, um, I guess, mechanical workshops and tuning houses, but from, um, from an RV type sector, um, it's a new angle that, that provides or improves that resource pool of data that we have because it's, it's ultimately you know, vehicles that are generally heavily laden uh, and that's a useful bit of information to have when we calibrate. It helps yeah. everyone in the long term. Yeah, that's, that's good. So if, uh, if people have got um, more questions on all of the um, diesel tuning side of things, you can give us here at Cruise Master Tone Performance Centre a call or give Damo and the team a call over at Flash Diesel and be able to help you out. And um, I'm sure there'll be plenty more things from the pair of us on um, social media. You guys have got a Facebook page and all that type of stuff. So keep an eye out on that to see more about um, diesel tuning and, and that type of thing.